Hi there, everyone. It is currently the evening of the 29th of August 2011, and also watching two tropical systems out here in the Western Pacific currently. We have a typhoon, actually, or excuse me, tropical storm Namado moving off towards the west and west of Taiwan here. Kind of an update here later on tonight, or possibly tomorrow morning, more on this system here as it continues to move away from Taiwan. Lots of flooding being recorded throughout this entire region here, and actually going to wait to update on this until we get some more information out of there. And also, still about up 10 reports of deaths coming out of the northern Philippines and still a lot of flooding and mudslides reports coming out of this region as well all due to this typhoon as it slowly tracked over northern Luzon and off towards Taiwan here and now off towards southeastern China so continuing to watch this here still developing out of here but really the main concern or main focus of this video I'm putting out here is on tropical storm Talos currently uh, moving off towards the north current winds out of the system about 55 gusting up to 70 knots as shown here on JMA's 9 Zulu warning, actually they have 55 gusting up to 80 knots here as it slowly starts to track off towards the west, or excuse me, north-northwest before starting to make more of a northwest turn and then eventually going straight off towards the north as an upper level trough starts to approach in from the west. Really a lot of complex steering flow with this system as there is actually an area of high pressure off here towards the northwest and actually off towards the east as well. If you look at the KMA surface analysis, you can get a quick feel on what actually I'm talking about here with this area of high pressure in the Sea of Japan. Another one off towards the east here. Now, these two are going to separate up and actually a weakness in these highs are actually going to form up here just off the east coast of Honshu and that's really where the track is look like it's going to be pointing right now. Uh, really just coming up in between these two areas. Looking at the streamline analysis, also you can indicate the same situation with the weakness in this high pressure ridge right through here indicated here just basically uh, right where at the bend of Japan here starting off on the Kanto Plain and stretching up towards the north here up ending up in a southern Hokkaido is really where the track looks like it's basically going to take this here. So really in the consensus and in the model consensus as well is uh, really uh, coinciding with each other on the fact that this is going to basically track off towards the north right along the 140 meridian right in here and basically cross right over Japan in this exact location here. And now uh, actually looking at the model consensus as well where the models have uh, come in a lot more agreement today as opposed to the last several days where they actually were to spread all the way out on uh, the fact of where this system was exactly going to go. But right now it looks like there's going to be a landfall in the Kanto Plain region, a heavy populated Tokyo metropolitan area. It's going to see some high winds out of this. Definitely tropical storm winds are likely and especially up near the coastal regions and already starting to see a build up here some high surf and possibility of storm surge but right near the coast storm surge really going to be weak though as this when this makes landfall it's going to be more around the uh, category one uh, equivalent of a hurricane so really kind of a, a weak system at landfall but right now we are continuing to see intensification out of this and really just overall you're starting to see the more consolidated center of circulation so uh, as it does gradually work off towards the north it is going to encounter some Increased vertical wind shear about 40 to 30 knots here just off in the northern periphery and actually you can kind of see that on the satellite imagery here just kind of sheared off in the northern part here so that should suppress it a little bit and also looking at the vorticity with a lot of subsidence along the northern periphery as well as indicated here on this in vorticity chart so really that should suppress it on the northern periphery of it and not expecting too rapid of intensification out of this as it continues to track off towards the north yet uh, working in the storm's favor though is uh, some pretty uh, decent sea surface temperatures around 28 to 29 degrees right under this just off the coast of Iwato and also uh, currently not under a lot of weirotic wind shear about 5 to 10 knots so with all these factors combined, I'm really looking at a possibility of a landfall of a typhoon here along southeastern Japan as a weak typhoon, though, between about 64 to about 70 knots at landfall here. And that's kind of coinciding with what JMA is kind of predicting right now is a possibility of maxing out about 70 knots before this starts to turn off towards the northeast. If you quickly look at this, though, it does look like it is really organized. But overall, though, a lot of these low clouds are on the north, the western periphery. So it's kind of sheared off here, as indicated in a shear chart as well the northern periphery and a lot of the higher cloud tops are knocked off so a lot of that latent heat that is needed for further intensification into the warm core low here is really just getting released into the atmosphere instead of feeding the energy system into this so continuing to watch this system I do want to stress for people to continue to follow what JMA and JTWC are putting out on this the official warnings JTWC actually a little bit stronger on their forecast than what JMA is 
with winds maxing out at around 90 gusting up to 110 knots with this system yet they do have a decreasing in intensity before landfall due to that increased vertical wind shear and also land interaction before making landfall here over Japan and also noting their track here is also off towards the west of the Kanto plane or the west of Tokyo putting that region in the right front quadrant which would be not the good region here for the system making landfall as it has its forward momentum and that wind so uh, really going to continue to watch this here in the next 24 hours be a lot more clear on where exactly this is going to go I know the model consensus really is pinpointing here but the intensity is the big question right now as uh, JMA has this maxing out about 70 while JTBC goes up to 90 gusting up 110 knots so also looking at the model consensus actually this really big spread on the intensity as well so uh, right now looking at a, my thoughts on it is probably a weak typhoon prior to landfall here and then as it crosses the island really going to see a rapid weakening in this but going to continue to watch it here and especially up into the Tokyo metropolitan area where there's a lot of high-rise buildings you could see some localized funneling through those buildings especially people that are watching this in the Tokyo area so I want to continue to watch that as well but really you're expected to start to see winds start to increase across Japan here on the first into the second so still a few more days to continue to watch this and we're definitely going to continue to uh, keep you posted here at westernpacificweather.com so thanks again for watching everybody stay safe out there as already noted earlier though continue to check JMA and JTWC for any uh, new updates on this system uh, definitely their official sources and definitely heed any evacuation orders that are putting out here so have another update tomorrow so check back here at westernpacificweather.com and stay safe out there everybody